welcome to Little Learners. Today's video is all about phonics and what it is exactly. I have made videos on this topic on this channel a long time ago, but we have so many more subscribers than we did back then and so I thought it would be good to do an updated video so that everyone who's new to the channel can find out exactly what phonics is because we talk about it a lot on this channel. Before we get started don't forget to click that subscribe button to join the Little Learners family and see more videos like this. You can click the bell so you get notified each time I post a new video and do give this video a thumbs up if you find it enjoyable, helpful, interesting because it really helps out the channel. So what is phonics? Phonics is the method we use to teach children how to read by matching the letter sound or phoneme to the way the letter looks, the written letter or grapheme. So for example, we have the letter G that makes a G sound. We have the letter A that makes an A sound. So when children see the letter written down, they know the sound associated with it. The second question I get asked a lot is, what is systematic synthetic phonics? We usually just say phonics, but you may also hear it referred to as systematic synthetic phonics, which makes it sound very fancy and very complicated, but we can break that down pretty easily. So we have systematic, meaning a system or a structured way to read by breaking up words into their individual sounds. And then we have synthetic, which means synthesizing, so blending those sounds together to read the full word. So hopefully that makes a lot more sense and makes it a lot easier to understand. Before we move on, I just want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Give Internet. Give Internet is a non-profit platform that makes it easy for you to sponsor internet access and laptops for underprivileged high school students living in refugee camps, rural areas and underserved communities in developing countries. There are over 1 billion students worldwide who don't have internet access. They've missed out on education, online jobs, conversations and equal opportunities. And we've missed out on their potential. Because after all, if you haven't seen on my t-shirt already, knowledge is freedom. Their local educational partners provide skills development programs such as coding, design and healthcare, enabling the students to make a living. If you'd like to make a donation to Give Internet today, you can do so using the link in my description. If you use that particular link, your donation will be doubled. Thank you so much to Give Internet for sponsoring today's video. Let's get back to the phonics. That brings us to segmenting and blending, two very important parts of phonics and two words you may hear a lot if your own child is learning phonics or if you're a teacher or another educator teaching children to read. So we have segmenting. To segment means to break something up. So we are breaking up a word into its smallest unit of sounds, also known as phonemes. So for example, if we take the word cat, if we segment this word, we have k, a, t. Similarly, if we take the word ship and we break it up into its individual sounds, not its individual letters, but its individual sounds, we get sh, i, p. And there we go with those two letter sounds again, and I promise we're going to get onto those. Next we have blending. So once children have learnt how to segment and break up a word, which is usually the easier of the two between segmenting and blending, they then learn how to blend those sounds together to read the whole word. And this can sometimes take a while for this skill to develop because it is quite tricky and it involves a lot of different skills going on at once. So if we take the same words again, the first word here, the child has segmented it into k, a, t, and then they will blend it to make cat. And with our next word, they've segmented it into sh, i, p, and then we'll blend those sounds together to read the word ship. So it's all about seeing a word, breaking it up into its smallest units of sound to then blend those sounds together again to be able to read the full word. Okay, let's talk about digraphs, trigraphs and even quadgraphs. 
We've seen already a couple of sounds that have two letters, so I thought it would be important in this video to explain what those are. So children will start to learn about digraphs and these are sounds that are represented by two letters. So for example, the sh in ship or the oo in boot. We also have trigraphs, which are represented by three letters. These are less common, but include such sounds as I, which is represented by an I, G and an H, like in the word bright. We even have quad graphs, which are even less common, such as A in the word eight, which is represented by an E, an I, a G and an H. The English language doesn't make a lot of sense a lot of the time. But with phonics and with systematic synthetic phonics, we try to make it as easy to learn as possible. I do have some other videos about digraphs and how to support your child with phonics and I will link those in the description box down below. When we look at phonics, we also think about it in phases. There are usually five or six phases depending on what you believe and which scheme you're using for phonics. So first we have phase one. This begins at birth and this is all about understanding sounds in their environment and being able to distinguish between different sounds, experimenting with sound and helping with that understanding as well as listening skills. I have a whole video about phase one, so make sure you check that out. Then we move on to phase two. This is what people usually think of when they think of phonics. This is where children start learning letter sounds. Now we don't learn letter sounds in alphabetical order. We actually learn them in a very particular order because this order makes it easier for children to read more words more quickly. And also there is an argument that the order of these letter sounds are easier and progress to become more difficult as you go on. In phase three, children continue to learn those individual letter sounds and also are introduced to some digraphs and even trigraphs. In phase four, children are using everything that they've learnt. They're not introduced to any new sounds or letter groups. They are just becoming more fluent and more confident in what they've learnt. In phase five, this is where the whole idea of English making no sense comes in because children start learning about alternative spellings and pronunciations. So for example, children by this point will know the sound a represented by an A and an I, such as in the word rain. But they will also then learn that the sound A can be represented by an A and a Y, or an E and I, a G and an H. Then we have phase six. Not everyone considers phase six an actual phase anymore because it is all about just continuing to become more fluent readers, more confident readers, and just the continuing reading journey really for the rest of life. Now I know some of you may be watching this video because your child is about to start school and you want to know kind of what phonics is and how you can support them. I have actually just written a book called Starting School, A Guide for Parents and Carers, which is available on Amazon now. You can buy it as a printed copy or on Kindle if you prefer to read that way. I will leave the link in the description box down below. And of course, you can go to my website, littlelearners.education, to find more resources and guides, more information about phonics. Please leave your questions in the comments down below if there's anything that I've missed, but hopefully this gives you kind of a summary of phonics and a better idea of what it is and why we teach it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.